working with me. Um, when I was told my talk was three o'clock on a Friday afternoon, I was thinking I might be talking to an empty room. So those of you that are still here, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to introduce my guests. Uh, and we have Natalia and Alexander Sturjuk. If you'd like to join me on the stage. And Michelle Garcia. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to kind of, we've already done a little show of hands of people that are e-residents. Let's, now there's a few more people coming in. Do we have anybody in the audience that's an e-resident? Okay, reasonable number. Any people in here thinking of becoming e-residents? Ah, well, you will learn lots during this panel about it. Um, for those who don't know, this um, e-residency scheme was set up by the government in 2014 um, as a way of allowing people to set up their businesses and take advantage of the e-services that Estonia had been doing for, for, for many years beforehand. And it now has 92,000 e-residents and 21 and a half thousand businesses. So, I mean, it's been a, a, a success. And we are now gonna hear from our panel about the things that they have found that benefited them from, from becoming e-residents. Michelle, should we start with you? Um, okay. First of all, tell me a little bit about your business and, and yourself and where you come from. Okay, um, I am come from Rio, Brazil. Um, I am a marketing professional. I have been working with marketing for the last 12 years. And I'm a specialist in a specific technology called HubSpot. Um, and my business is based on consultation on this platform. And is that something that uh, you wanted to expand? Or was that it, when you were in Brazil, that was your main business. And I know you've got another business now, and I'm going to consult my notes to get the pronunciation right. Cuningana? Brasilia Cuningana, that's the name of the company. And you've named your company that for, with a particular reason, and a, a bit of a yeah. nod to Estonia, right? Yeah. Um, at the time, um, in 2020, I was working as a marketing director for a startup in Brazil, and two of my colleagues were Estonian, and also part of the investment group was had Estonian um, um, funds. So um, I told them that um, I had these side projects about HubSpot consultation and that the international demand for this type of work was increasing. And it was very, like, bureaucratic to work with these international companies um, with under a Brazilian company. It was very bureaucratic. So they told me about uh, e-residency and that through e-residency I could open a digital business in Estonia. So that, I, I took that a deeper look. Point. Yeah, I took a deeper look and that was it. And Natalia and Alexander, tell us Bit about your business. Yeah. <clears throat> I manage a company, PR News Detail. It's an um, uh, alternative for, uh, uh, for uh, expensive PR in the form of uh, sponsored content marketplace. Uh, PR News allow uh, customers and brands uh, get publication in uh, online media and uh, uh, news uh, uh, publishers to return uh, rewards. And um, <clears throat> so it's an online platform. Uh, when connect, we are connected to uh, media and, 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 and brands. Yes, and the main point is that we, the, the main goal is cross-boarding when people and clients from Estonia, for example, want to uh, order placements in media of Africa, Latam, or other countries, and they can do it through our platform in two clicks in order to avoid these language uh, borders payment borders, etc., and that peer news help with branded content and media in different countries. And that's why Estonia was a good choice for us, because we would like to expand globally. And to be in the European Union, it's, 
it was the right decision to do. Now, Michelle, you've hinted at why you found out about e-residency, because you had some colleagues that were from Estonia. Yeah. But explain, you know, your journey, how you discovered that e-residency was going to be a good fit for your business. Yeah, so when they told me about the program, the first thing I did was to research about it. And I tried to see if there were other countries that had something similar. And um, I found that the Estonian e-residence was the best solution for what I was looking for, which was um, having this um, opportunity of going to the European market. Um, I did had, I have, um, at the time I had a Brazilian company, but presenting myself as a Brazilian for some companies, um, they, th this is something, unfortunately, I, I felt like, um, that they see like Brazilians, Indians, Argentinians as like cheap workforce. So when you go to the market as an European company, it totally changes. So it's not that I had less opportunity, but opportunities, but I got more opportunities of increasing my income mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And I know that when you came to Estonia for Latitude, it was a very long flight. You had to go through quite a few changes to get here. Yeah. Uh, in fact, actually, people in Estonia do seem to apologise a lot for the fact that it's uh, a long way from anywhere else. Apologise for that. And the thing that makes me at home is that they're the only country in the world that apologises more than people in the UK about the weather. So, <laughs> But in terms of setting up your business... That wasn't so much of a traumatic journey, right? Can you just explain how you, how you sort of go about becoming an e-resident in terms of the yeah. practical steps you need to take? It was very, very easy because I started the process online. You just pay, um, I don't remember exactly at the time how much I paid, but it's a small fee. Um, and I think I waited for 30, less than 30 days for them to say, okay, you it's ready, you can, you can now come pick up your e residency card. So at the time, they didn't have a pickup point in, in Brazil. So I had to fly over to Tallinn to pick it up. And, and you saw snow for the first it time. It was <laughs> like I came, I came during the winter um, of 2020. It was still like um, some lockdown around. Um, and for me, what's a very, um, very great experience because the town was kind of empty. It was like everything was, you know, for me there to enjoy. Um, and the, the weather here, like it's very dark during winter. So it was very exotic for me as well. <laughs> and it was my first time with snow, uh, experience with snow. So it was very memorable. Now, Alexander, you're a little bit closer in geography to Estonia. Uh, you um, come from Ukraine, and we'll talk about the Ukraine situation with businesses a, a little bit later. But in terms of um, becoming an e-resident, how did you find out about the scheme? And the same question I put to Michelle, how, how did you decide that it w was the right thing for you two guys? Yeah, we launched PR News in Ukraine, but a bit before we choose Estonia. We set up a company in Czech Republic and it was so hard to manage it remotely. It was really a problem because I have a lot of business trips to uh, Prague. I really love Prague, but it's uh, uh, not uh, convenient uh, uh, to make um, so, so, so many business trips. And uh, my brother sent me a link. Uh, you can see that uh, Estonia has some e-residency program and um, I uh, submit an application and uh, uh, make some payments uh, fee. Uh, and uh, after two weeks, I received an email from police department that uh, about a new stage. Uh, and uh, uh, after maybe two or three weeks, uh, the, uh, I'm going to uh, Kiev, um, uh, Estonian embassy in Kiev, and I received the card, and I, I, I remember this day when I uh, make a picture and send it in our corporate chat, 
and they say, "Oh, guys, uh, uh, today we can uh, do something, something amazing." Yes, and uh, this day, uh, I, 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 uh, I was uh, s- setting up a company and uh, uh, opened an account in, uh, as I remember, uh, some fintech uh, services. And yeah, uh, and we received the first payment after maybe on, on the second day. So it was really, uh, really uh, useful. Um, and uh, we managed company for two years uh, from uh, sitting in, in Mykolaiv in the south of Ukraine. And um, yeah. And Natalia, just give us a bit of a flavor of um, how easy it was to do business in Ukraine before the war and you know if you're still in touch with businesses that are based there how that's changed uh, since February the 24th? Well it was easy but we have to have a bank account in the European uh, uh, country in order to receive payments uh, from our uh, clients abroad as we also work with publishers we have to do payouts and as we work with press releases which leave 24 hours we unfortunately we can't wait uh, for like several days when the payment goes to our publisher and after that he would publish an article. And in that we have to find a way uh, through e-residency to manage all these payments. Uh, and uh, about the business in Ukraine, we're really um, very grateful to Ukraine because it was now so easy to uh, make business there because of the cr- like some crisis, etc. as we're a bootstrap company but it gives us that strength. And then when we came to any other European countries where each uh, problems, we just feel like, oh, it's challenges, it's not problems. And you've got a special um, scheme going in your business to help Ukraine at the moment, haven't you? Do you want to talk a bit about To help that? Ukrainian media. Yeah, yeah with, the, with the media specifically, which yes. I think is an interesting we thing. We launched a program as we operate with all where, like, uh, 5,000 U- Ukrainian media and after the war was started uh, we do understand that they need support and uh, due to that option that we have a lot of payment options in our marketplace so that people from China can uh, proceed payment with Alipay with other uh, bank transfer and uh, a lot of currencies we launched this program like support Ukrainian media it's the similar like Airbnb or Book Indeed when you do not have to uh, live uh, in the accommodations, you do not have to um, publish that in Ukrainian media, but you can donate. Also, we um, decline all the commission fees as we, ex- as we have service fee as we operate as a marketplace. We decline it for all the Ukrainian payments as a donations, and we... And, and start- we collect mm-hmm. uh, 35,000 uh, uh, euros uh, by customers uh, who audit... Uh, uh, this uh, advertising, so yeah, it's it's really nice. Yes, because each day, unfortunately, we got messages from our partners, Ukrainian media. Hey, guys, do you have something for us, like an advertisement, etc.? And we don't understand that we have to support them uh, because we have that, um, like, we have that European clients, the clients from other countries, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that way we can help them. Yeah, and you mentioned that 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 final stage to become an e-resident, you have to actually go somewhere to validate yourself, and you did it in the Kiev, um, in the embassy. We were talking before the panel about whether the embassy is still able to process that, and I guess the answer is that they've probably got more important things to think about. So what do Ukrainian businesses do now if if they want to sort of become e-residents? Is there any sort of second option for them? What's what's the situation? (coughs) A few of my friends uh, who are um, uh, developers or IT guys, uh, they have a residency card, but they do not uh, create a company b- before uh, before the war. And now they can, uh, uh, a few of them uh, s- set up a company and start work on uh, on Amazon, on, on uh, Upwork, and they receive some orders and uh, transfer uh, uh, rewards on Estonian company. So, uh, in this case, the, the uh, um, residency uh, digital sign-in is helpful for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to also bust a few myths about the e-residency scheme. Um, some people will think that perhaps coming and becoming an e-resident, setting up a business in Estonia, has tax benefits. Can you explain, you know, whether that's the case and how you sort of, without going into too much detail 
how the sort of tax works for your particular company? First of all, we uh, should understand um, the Estonian tax. It's, it's, it's not a, uh, uh, some tax heaven and it's not cheap, um, but uh, it's a really uh, unique tax system as you uh, can uh, reinvest your uh, uh, operation funds. And uh, as a bootstrap company, we can reinvest uh, in, in our business processes uh, without paying tax. Uh, yeah, and in, in this case, it's, it's helpful for us. And what have you found to be sort of the biggest benefits, Natalia, in terms of the company running now with the residency in place? Could you I kind know. of... Mm-hmm. I know that you like to speak about money, tax, etc. But for me, residency is only about community, right. because I already shared my ideas like over the past several days that when you're being a bit of after 30, sometimes you have that lack of young energy <laughs> to pitch, to onboard, to make new connections, to networking. And I've signed uh, for a residency Facebook group and uh, there can be a message like, hi guys, I'm a newbie here. I just launched my company through e-residency. I have that great crazy idea of startup. And I, oh my God, there are some people that well-educated that think out of the box and you start to reflect that energy. And that really helps me in that situation, uh, really helps me to uh, work, to continue working, to um, contact clients, etc., and to support our, because you have to be strong. But particularly you are in a safe position right now mm. comparison to my uh, imp- co- colleagues in Ukraine. And you understand that you have to be strong in order to um, help their relatives, theirs. So yes, that was community, that was I like from your residency yeah. very much. The thing that's sort of come across to me, meeting some e-residents over the course of this week, is that a lot of people, even though the e-residency scheme isn't designed for people to become citizens and, and it doesn't offer any, mm-hmm. partic- any benefits if you want to become citizens, but lots of people are choosing to base themselves in Tallinn. And you are, you are thinking about doing this, aren't you? So tell us what, what you're planning for the future of your business and your e-residency. Um, I, like, the first time I stepped in Estonia, I fell in love with the place. <laughs> So, even the snow. <laughs> even with the snow. And I'm used to the very hot weather. Um, and uh, I'm planning on two years from now um, to come to Estonia to move here under the digital nomad visa uh, at first. Um, to try to live here for at least one full year. Mm-hmm. And then um, have enough like experience uh, to say, okay, this is where I want to grow my roots. Probably it will. (laughs) And uh, for my business, um, for now, I I work alone with uh, under my business, um, but I'm already training one person to start working with me. Um, She's starting as as my first intern. Um, and I do want also give some social purpose to my uh, business. So one thing I have in mind, and I just need to figure out how to make it happen. But one thing I have in mind is to um, help um, you know women around the world that are victims of some kind of violence to. Um, help them get trained uh, into technology, like uh, the platform that I work with, and help them on, you know, placing them on specific projects that help them, um, give them some way of trying to overcome the situations they they face. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is something I'm trying to figure out how I can make it work, because, like, For a project like this, I would need investment, and investors are more interested on the revenue potential that than um, social impact. So, and Natalia was saying that it's a very supportive community. It uh, is Estonia. Have you found that too? Yes. The wider sort of tech and startup community has, has been helpful yes, to Yes, one of the things that made me fall in love with Estonia, besides the country itself, it's this startup ecosystem 
It's something I love to be around. This is one reason also why I'm, I'm moving to Sao Paulo mm -hmm. in Brazil, mm -hmm. because... You started start off in Rio, yeah. Uh, yeah. and now you're in yeah. Sao Paulo, because that's the business kind of area. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, it's much easier here for you to have access to um, CEOs and, and uh, investors than it is in a huge country like Brazil, for example. So here, the community is more, how can I say, um, tighter. Mm -hmm. And dare I ask the question about sort of female representation? Because I know all countries are struggling with this. Is the female entrepreneur scene in Estonia alive and well from what you've seen? Um, we're still minority, but of course. we, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, uh, whatever I can also like contribute to make that grow, like the difference actually decrease between women and, and men, I, I will do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Alexandra, you're both living in Tallinn at the moment. Is that your plan for the long term or are you hoping to uh, go back to Ukraine at some point? We have a, a small dream to uh, build a next big unicorn in ed tech uh, industry. So um, I think it's uh, Estonia for us the best place because you you can have a uh, lunch with uh, some entrepreneur who create uh, this uh, unicorn. So uh, for network, is, uh, uh, it's a nice place. And uh, yeah. And yes, we, maybe we th thought about moving to another country, but we get used that in Estonia is everything online and digital, and mm -hmm. we're not sure that we are ready to uh, feel some bureaucracy in, for, for example, in the UK or other European country. Yes, there's a lot of bureaucracy in the UK. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Brexit. So there's two good reasons not to go yes, there. <laughs> that's true. So now, for now, we stay in Estonia. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've asked enough questions, so I'd like to throw it out to the audience. Anybody out there got a question for our panel? Oh. It's Friday afternoon, I know. Questions aren't <laughs> going to come thick and fast. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I have a personal question. Um, what is your, like for each of you, no, the biggest achievement, uh, like, becoming a new resident, opening your company in Estonia. I would like to hear about it, like personally or professionally, as you like. Uh, personal for me, I've uh, passed the exams of A1 Estonian. <laughs> and, now, <laughs> thank you. and now I'm trying to attend uh, A2 courses of Estonian. So oh. for me, it's really very uh, big personal achievement. <laughs> Are you learning es Estonian as well? Michelle, sorry. Are you learning Estonian? Uh, I just know a couple of words. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, once I move into Estonia, I, I, I will try to learn more for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, the like biggest achievement so far, um, I got this opportunity of increasing my income, which allowed me to buy my house. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think this is the biggest personal achievement that this partnership with uh, e-residents brought me. That's a pretty, pretty good one. Yeah. Yes. And professionally, like this is my first time speaking. At an You've event. done brilliantly. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, second actually, but then I stage like this is the first time. Michelle it was really nervous until she found out she was going to have a chair, and yes. then she calmed down a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Now, when I at the beginning asked for a show of hands about people thinking about whether to become an e-resident, we only had one person that put their hand up. But if you were going to advise people about the process and, you know, say a piece of advice for anybody thinking about it, what would that piece of advice be? Should we start with you, Alexander? Um, I think that the advice will be do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. because we thought about... Like, uh, we have now about e-residence like six years ago, but we applied uh, near four years ago. So mm -hmm. we, I don't know why, but we make that break for two years mm -hmm. just to considering to do or not to do. It mm -hmm. was like, and after we did it, it was, okay, why we didn't do that before? Mm -hmm. It was our main question. 
Would you have any extra advice? With the relocation, uh, maybe, yeah. We, we start to think uh, why we... Uh, we um, you know, um, every day you ask um, some questions. Uh, For yourself, first, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and speaking about language, uh, my 66-year-old uh, 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 daughter, she going to uh, kindergarten and she teach me some Estonian words, uh, numbers and colors. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to learn from yeah. children, right? Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, would you have any words of advice to anybody that was thinking of becoming an e-resident? And, and do you see many people, uh, our friends and business people that you know in Brazil thinking of doing that because now in Sao Paulo there is a pickup point so they don't all have to it's make that journey actually, through the yeah. winter to come to Tallinn to become one and uh, are you finding people showing interest and what would you say to them? Well um, I would say like go for it but like uh, Brazil is a huge country so mm -hmm. um, I think we still need like more publicity there about the program but um, since I, st I started as a new residence, I got some friends interested, mm -hmm. asking questions and everything, but um, I think none of them yet apply it, but they are planning on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you talked uh, earlier about the problems with setting up a business in Brazil. Just tell us a bit more about that. You touched on it, but it's, is it a really bureaucratic process or what are the real sort of issues if you want to become an entrepreneur in Brazil well, and a woman entrepreneur? <laughs> it's like uh, Brazil is very bureau bureaucratic, but mm. with time it's becoming less, but it's still very bureaucratic. Um, the process there is more about like taxation. So it's much more complex than Estonia because Estonia you have like a flat rate and that's it. In Brazil you have like so many exceptions and so like many specific services that go under this rate or that rate and um, also working with international clients as I do, um, it's not, how can I say, um, very profitable. Um, so for me, um, I do have like a Brazilian company that I work with Brazilian customers, but international customers I do under my Estonian company. And you also touched on this, but it's probably worth emphasizing again. One of the things that you said was the key to it was the access to the EU market yes. and the sort of the... the, the um, the way that you were treated. So was that a noticeable difference as soon as you had your e-residency? You as a, a company That's, were getting listened to and getting yes. taken more seriously? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, like in Brazil, um, I do exactly the same job that I do under my Brazilian company, I do under my Estonian company. But the feedback under the Estonian company is much better. Mm -hmm. um, and like, um, unfortunately, it's, it's I, I don't know why, but unfortunately, it, it mm -hmm. feels like this. Do you find the same? That the feedback well, since you've had your e-residency, is that that made a visible difference to the way that, uh, that your clients treat you? Yeah, <clears throat> I think the, the, the same, maybe. <clears throat> Um, yes, I would add to <clears throat> Michelle that as being Brazilian, being Ukrainian is like the same. When you speak mm -hmm. to clients like, where are you from, Ukraine? Okay, I will think, uh, later, I will let you know, buy or buy products from you. And when you say that you are from Estonia, okay, it's so Northern Europe. Uh, okay, I, I also share this story, but we share, have a, a Zoom call with a client from Canada. Uh, it was our first Zoom call and I'm trying to onboard him and to sell him our product. And in the middle of the um, uh, Zoom call, he said, where are you from? I said, I'm, from, I'm originally from Ukraine, but I'm Estonian and I'm a resident here. Resident here, he said, really? <laughs> and that moment he picks up this blue card. He said, hey, Natalie, I'm also a resident. <laughs> so I'm in Esto Ukraine and Estonia, he's in Canada, and we are both a residents. Amazing. Yes. And we made a deal. And yes, he is still our client. The dialogue was uh, changed, yeah. <laughs> Another <laughs> way. <yeah. laughs> 
we call it the old school tie in Britain, but having that little blue card, that's a good community for, mm-hmm. for you here too. Well, we've run out of time, unless there was anybody else that wanted to ask a last minute question. Oh, we do have a question over here. Go. Wait for the mic. Um, hello. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to ask if um, you think that you received any leads for your business from the Estonian community and um, otherwise if you provide uh, business leads to Estonian companies. If you think that this, this, this interchange of uh, business opportunities among people or, or if that is still a bit closed and should be open more. There are a lot of um, <clears throat> non-official community in Telegram channels and uh, Facebook community where your residents ask uh, questions and uh, <clears throat> and um, um, we know how to do bootstrap business and we know um, how to do uh, international companies and how to sell digital products. So uh, as we do PR, we can help them with PR so we can find some potential clients and uh, ask uh, what they do with their marketing and, and, and digital PR. In this case, yes, we, we, can, we can find. <clears throat> but uh, uh, the best way is uh, if someone uh, wrote in, in, in Facebook, uh, oh, guys, I'm in Tallinn and I, I'm, I'm from uh, um, Argentina and um, I would like to have a lunch. So, and uh, being in Tallinn, I, I, I can... I can um, uh, and challenge him. Yeah, <clears throat> have a lunch with him, and, and we, we can uh, make some conversation. And uh, uh, in this case, we bought some some services from uh, from these guys, so it's uh, it's uh, the same. <clears throat> yeah, for for me, for example, I um, I got um, not not through the community but because of the e-residence i was able to get some um clients on the same like time zone as mm-hmm. Tallinn because yeah. the business yeah. is based in estonia so i got a client in israel for example um and uh, i haven't yet refer- referred um any clients to the community yet, but I hope to contribute uh, soon. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to my panel for joining me.